Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at a way you can build a teleprompter inside of vMix using shortcuts and scripting. So, but before we get to that, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. And if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please just post them in the comments uh, for whatever platform you're viewing on. Also, if you'd like to join us here live on the show, just uh, connect to the link we have in the show notes here and somebody from the studio will get you on. All right, let's get started. So one of the things that I've been really interested in is figuring out different ways to add teleprompting capabilities into the vMix platform. And while there's no direct way, one of the key capabilities in vMix is that it has GT Title Designer and a, the ability to create scrolling tickers. So we're leveraging that with scripting and a lot of controls around that to put together a very serviceable teleprompter for the vMix environment all in one. So before I jump into the functionality for that, let me just uh, welcome some of the guests that have come in. So we have Rudy, always, uh, always great to have you on Rudy. Thank you for joining. And we have uh, Kyle Gunderman. Uh, Kyle, thank you. Uh, uh, please, you know, feel free to engage on anything you want. If you have any questions as we go through, we'd love to have you, uh, you jump in and ask them. All right, so for this teleprompter, what we wanted to create was something that first you could load a script into, but also given the way that people actually work when they leverage a teleprompter, you can actually now load segments of scripts. You can break a script up into individual segments and take any one of those segments, load that in and go through that so you get that correctly. So it gives you the opportunity to work with a script in multiple ways. Uh, the next thing is we have an adjustable scroll speed. So you can dynamically choose how quickly or slowly you want the scrolling of the text to take place. We give you the ability when you pause the script to have a producer video pop up and allow that producer to interact with talent. And this is especially useful if you're working with remote talent. Uh, if, you're, if you have people that are connecting to your production remotely and they need to sort of stay on a fixed set of points with real almost like time hits that they have to, to make as they go through that, this can be very useful and having that ability for a producer when you pause to jump in and make an adjustment uh, to what they're doing can be, can be very powerful. And the other thing we added was uh, a timer. So you can actually set a timer and then start and stop it to help keep whoever is doing the presentation sort of on track and on pace given you know, a lot of things that, that have more rigid timeframes that they have to be done in. So how do we do this? Uh, let's start first by looking at vMix here. And if we go to the interface, so you can see I've got a second camera over here that's working with everything. So this is really a very simple vMix interface that we have here. So we have the actual GT title with all the prompter details in that, and we'll go through that. We have a background for this, and this background as an input is what you put the title over, but this is also where we leverage the producer video as a layer. So you can pop it on and off by controlling that layer. And then we just have the producer video coming in here. So very, very basic framework for all of this. So what probably makes sense is for me to jump in and show you a bit of what we did in GT Title Designer. And then we can talk a bit more about how this all works with scripting and shortcuts. So what I'm going to do, we have the title here. I'm going to turn on a background in this so it makes it a little easier to see how it will look in the final uh, setup we have in vMix. So we have just a set of layers that we've we put together in GT Title Designer. So across the bottom, what we have is we have a segment 
So for, if, you, if you load an in individual segment into the prompter here, you will see the information about that segment, the title and any potential notes that you may have around that title to sort of help whoever is going to be reading just sort of keep to a certain emphasis or a certain pacing or a certain type of presentation. We have our timer that's sitting right down here. We have an indicator of the scroll speed so that if somebody is looking at it uh, and they want to see how quickly this is going and say bump it up or bump it down and give them a, you know, whoever is controlling this, a rough estimate of how to adjust the speed, that gives them a little more information. And then on the upper part is where we actually have the elements that go into the prompter pieces themselves. And so for that, we have a, basically a three layers here. The one is called the prompt, and the prompt layer is basically a ticker. The ticker is set up, so let me sort of jump into that. The ticker here is set up with, uh, we're replacing the text, the scroll direction is at the top, and it sort of defaults to a 1.5 uh, speed. That's just the speed indicators in vMix. They, they go from painfully slow to ridiculously fast and everywhere in between, so I think it's a thousand range of points. So this gives you a sense for how quickly this is moving by default, but we have controls for all that. Then what we have in addition are two overlays, a top sort of blur and a bottom blur. That's this piece up here that you see, if I sort of click up here, that grays out the text a little, so it keeps your focus right here on the center space, which is what you'll use to look at, you know, when you're reading as, 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 a, as an actual presenter. So this is the structure of here. There's not a lot in here, but we do have everything set up and named so it's very easy for us to control this through shortcuts and scripting. So that's what we have put together here. So very simple components, power and magic is all in how you control them through the automation piece. So. Before we get to that, we have a few more people that have joined us. So we have Bill Mew is back. Bill, thank you for joining us from Tunbridge Wells in the UK. So definitely appreciate you making the time. So we have Battle for Freedom. Uh, so, you know, time to learn from the AV Jedi Master. I, I, I would hardly, I, I'm probably more Padawan than Master, but we'll, uh, we'll, I take that with gratitude. Thank you. And we have One Man Stream. So, saying hello from Derby City. So thank you very much, one man. I appreciate it. So hopefully you'll all get uh, something out of this. So let's start first by looking a bit at the script that we have set up itself. So I'm gonna jump over here. So the way we constructed a script is it's basically an XML file. And this is how we package our scripting for what we want to do. And it's, it's pretty straightforward the way this is set up. We have the basically the big script block here, and we have different segments. And we just number them if we wanted to use that as a reference. But so we go and we pull these seg we set these segments up. We give them a, a name, which is sort of the segment title. Uh, we give the notes, which is what you would give to whoever you wanted to have read it as sort of their prompting for how they should read it. And then let me see if I, I can do the wrap here so you'll, you'll see this a little bit better, word wrap. So, okay, so, and then under that, we have the text of that segment. And this gives us the ability now to break up a script into multiple segments that we could jump to and get down pat for each segment one at a time. But we also have the ability to just read all the segments that are in there and piece them all together as one long script. So if somebody wants to go through that and be prompted on the whole thing at one time, that's possible. But this is the XML we're working with. And because this is fairly straightforward, it's very easy to modify. So if you wanted to go in and just change anything in the script or just use this as a template and put in new scripts the next week or the next production, really just cut and paste for, for getting this all set up. So that's the, the basic part for what we're doing with the script itself that's going to be, we're going to use to do the prompting. The 
other piece we have in this is that uh, we have, in everything we've done, we have the ability now to set up a framework inside of a script here. So let me go over to the script. And what we'll do then is we will take that script, that, that script itself that we did. Sorry, there's two scripts here, the, the vMix Visual Basic script and the script we're using for the prompter. So we're going to read the prompter script uh, based on how our VB script uh, tells us to load it in and work with it. So let me jump through this and then we'll sort of go into some of the controls that we put around this. So when it comes to reading the script, what we have here is the usual suspects. We, we block out all the different things we need for the elements of the script that we're gonna read in and get all those defined. Then we turn around and say, we're actually gonna open up this file. That's the file stream open. So we have all that to, to load in the script. And you know we have notes if something doesn't load correctly, we can put an error message out. But once we have the script in, then what we're basically doing here is we're loading in the segments and we're creating a node list. And the node list for each entry in the node list has each segment that's in the script. And that's what we're doing right here when we read all that. We then get the count of segments so we know how many we need to loop through. And we go from there to decide how we're actually loading the script in. So the first thing we're gonna wanna know is, are we loading an individual segment or is it the full script? And the way we handle that here is using vMix dynamic values. So we set the dynamic value, value one in this case, to be either all, because I want the entire script to be read, or I have a number for which one of the segments that I want to load into the script. And so we pull that active segment out, and then based on what this is, we take two courses of action. If the active segment is all, then what we do is we loop through all of the segments that are in there, we pull the text out, and we add them all together, and that's how we build what we send into the script, uh, the, the prompter script. And the other thing we do is, if there are multiple segments, we will take and we'll read, we'll say there are multiple segments here, and we'll put the title of each segment in the notes because you're just doing the whole script all together. So it just gives you a sense of what am I actually looking at uh, segment by segment, so you understand that. So we're just pulling that information out. The if though, we have all that done, if it's just for one segment, we do something slightly different. So as opposed to looping through everything, we just go and we pick the one active segment, uh, and that's our segment index. And then we select the name of the segment, the notes associated with segment, and the text associated with the segment. And that pulls all the information that we need for that prompter session. From there, we are just writing that information into the GT Title Designer. So this is actually getting everything set up for loading the script. So you can see, we are loading the prompter text, we're loading the segment title and the segment notes. And those were all elements that we had in the GT title designer file. So you, you just go and you see all those layers. And as usual, you, you identify the name of the element inside GT title designer as doc text or dot source. Uh, so that gives you, you know, the ability to, to change any of those dynamically. So what happens when we do this. So let me actually show you some of what I want to do here on a, with some of the shortcuts and we'll go into specifically what we do for those shortcuts. So if we go to the stream deck over here, uh, what I have is I have the ability now to give you a sense of everything. I can say, I want to load all my segments or any one of them individually. I can say to load the script, and if I wanted to have multiple scripts, I could do that so I could just pop between different scripts. I can control the playback speed, which is the second row or the third row of buttons we have here. And it's play and pause and set the speeds. And then I also have controls on the bottom for a timer. So let me see if we can switch to the uh, 
output of vMix or the screen here. And then we'll, what I can do is show you exactly how this would look. So here we have, right now I haven't loaded any script or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I wanna load segment one of the script. So I'm right now I'm pressing segment one and I'm going load script. Now the script is loaded, but what I need to do is I need to queue it up. So that's going to move the script up so it starts to scroll up where I need it. Now the reason I have to do that is because we're leveraging a ticker inside GT Title Designer and the tickers sort of start off screen. So this just lets us jump up to the first line and then we can go from there. So that was basically what we were doing at the beginning of the, uh, you know, at the beginning of a read that we want to do with a talent. So now that I have all this set, I can turn around and say, I want to actually set and start playing at a specific speed. So we'll start at speed 3.5 right here. And now you'll notice when I do that, this moves, the image has gone away. So that remote uh, producer has disappeared off the screen and that's moving. And now if I pause, you'll see that the producers come back and could interact with the remote talent. And that gives you that sort of clean way to do it. You'll also notice that when I start it, we kick the timer off here. So this will, this timer now is giving the talent, you know, a cue to timing. I could pause the timer. I could reset the timer, do everything I want to do in terms of controlling that. And this timer doesn't, even though we synced it up in this case with the playback of the script, it doesn't need to be that way. You can just use it intermittently to say, I want to turn it on or off. So you have this ability with a timer. If I am done with this segment of the script, I can go, there is a script reset button here. So if I just press that, that will clear out the script. Then I can go and say, let me load segment two. I'm doing the same thing here. I queue it. And now we have the next segment ready to go. And this is basically a fairly repeatable process. Uh, so you could go through as many segments as you have and just jump through all this and work with that talent remotely. So this is the basic flow of this. We are using uh, lots of different shortcut elements in this. So let me switch over to uh, the vMix screen over here. And I'm gonna just show you, I'm not gonna go through this all here, but I just wanted to show you we have a whole set of shortcuts that we set up. So these are for cue, for reset, for play, all of these things are set up. And what we're doing for a lot of these is we have these set up as dynamic scripts. So if I jump over, I give you a sense of what some of these dynamic scripts are. Uh, let me see if I got this over here. So here's an example of what we'd have in, this is for doing the play and the pause. So in the play script, uh, on the pause, we'll start there. We set the ticker speed to whatever the ticker speed was set to. You know, we just turn around and say, uh, you know, we set it to value zero, regardless of what it was set to. And that basically stops the ticker. It does a pause. Uh, we then turn around and turn the prompter, layer one on the prompter background on, and that's the producer video. So in this case now, we stop the, stop the flow of the prompt, we turn on the producer video, and we pause if there was any sort of timer countdown, we pause that as well. So now you're sort of off time and the producer is talking. When I go back to play, what I'm going now is I'm saying, okay, set the ticker speed. We're doing the same thing. Instead of setting it to zero, we actually are using a second dynamic value. The first dynamic value said what part of the script, the prompter script we're looking at. And the second one says, what's our current speed that we are scrolling the script at? So all we do is re reset that to that dynamically stored value and turn off the producer video and restart the clock timer. So it gives us the ability to just sort of run through this. So that's just an example. There are lots of different individual scripts for loading everything up. But if we switch back to the vMix screen, what you'll notice here 
And this is what we talked about with the, the segments that we were using. All I'm doing is I'm doing set dynamic value shortcuts here for all of the things that we wanted to do with, you know, which script am I running? You know, which segment of the script or full script? And for any of the, uh, the timers that we have. And so th this here is, we are just, you know, doing simple shortcuts, adjust the timer, reset it to zero, and then I can turn around and say, you know, add minutes, add 10 seconds at a block or subtract 10 seconds or subtract minutes. So it lets me sort of play with the timer, but those are all just shortcuts that we put together here. So again, we're not doing a lot of crazy things to make this all happen, but we're using all of the functionality that's sitting here inside of vMix to, to go through this. Let me just get this off. So hopefully all of these things sort of make sense in the big flow of this as a production tool. You have from the start loading the control visually, you know, if you're looking at it, you, the, whoever is reading the script can see all the information that they need to know to read effectively and to keep on pace. And you have the interaction with the studio, even if they're remote. So a lot of nice things, things that aren't in here. And there's, there's, there's a lot that we want it. Uh, I have no way to know when the text on the screen uh, is looping. So there is no trigger or signal that says the ticker has looped back and you're starting from the beginning. So this ticker will just play through. And when it gets to the end, it starts from the beginning and keeps going. So that would have been really helpful because it would have made, it would have given us options for different things we could do at the end of a script plane, uh, but we don't have that. We also, you know, you don't have any sense when, you, when you're doing this of, you know, real, what actually is being displayed on the screen at any given time. So I have no way to sort of highlight text or do anything different or change it. You know, we looked at a couple of different ways to try to do that with just individual lines, but it, it just didn't look right or feel right. But, you know, so that's something else that's missing. And I realize we're using one piece of functionality. It wasn't designed for this to try to shoehorn in a prompter. But we think given the limitations around the scrolling tickers, that this is still a very serviceable way to work with remote talent. The other thing though, and this is, you know, this is funny because we, we thought we could do this inside of GT Title Designer, but there's no way to invert the screen. So I can't flip it around. So if you're using this with a mirrored prompter for something I'd want to do in studio, you can't do that. So you would have to have a monitor that could do that uh, screen flip itself. Uh, you know, not a, a major limitation, uh, but still a limitation nonetheless for people that don't have that type of setup. Uh, so hopefully this is something that you can integrate into your productions. And, you know, we'll post up, uh, you know, the script and maybe the vMix session as well. So you, you get, you know, some of this information and you can download it and play with it yourself. So before we wrap the main show, let's take a look. We have other people joining us. So we have, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I know I'm not going to say your name correctly, so I'm apologizing in advance. Uh, Ek Nubiet uh, from Indonesia. So Ek Nubiet, uh, hopefully I'm at least close to your name. Thank you very much for joining us. So we have Philippe joining us from Portugal. Uh, so Philippe, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we have, uh, I guess it's Onatas uh, Alveria, which from Brazil. So Onatas, thank you. Uh, and uh, it's, it's great to be here live with us for the first time. So I'm, I'm grateful that you were able to cut the time out. So Bill Mew is saying, could you have the segment blocks in a Google Sheets table so that an assistant can edit in real time? Excellent question. Quick answer is yes. Uh, you, the way this, the way I would probably do that is we would read in, you know, we would basically set up what we wanted and we'd pull that in from Google Sheets. 
But if you made a change to Google Sheets, that would probably be something where you'd have to take and reload the script for that. But that's definitely something that I think we could, uh, you know, you could do without a lot of changes to the, the code we set up here. You know, we actually did some stuff with Google Sheets in the past. So, you know, you sort of pull these two shows together and you could probably get exactly what you needed. So, so JP, uh, no date, JP, thank you for joining. So he said they were originally trying to do this uh, via Google Docs. He says, can you link this to a shortcut clicker to pause, play, et cetera? The uh, quick answer is yes. I mean, I could do that on a button. So anything that can simulate a button press, you, you definitely would be able to do this for. So the uh, quick answer is yes, we can. Uh, and you know, we have Samuel jumping in saying hello. So Samuel, welcome. Thank you for joining. All right, so uh, since we have some, some good questions here, let's wrap up the main show here. And uh, we will definitely be back next week. If you can't join us for the post show, uh, thank you for joining us for today. If you can join us, uh, hang around. We'll be back in in a couple of seconds and we can continue the discussion. Thanks everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you? So, up. Oh, so we're we're waiting for you to join us here live on air. So if you want to call in, just just call in now. But the so if uh, if I give you a little background, uh, when I started with this, uh, so actually I have Bill just said uh, he's asking, uh, are we making these scripts available? And yes. So Bill, we have uh, we have a GitHub site. Uh, I will post it in the show notes. But uh, if you want to download any of the scripts from any of these shows, you'll be able to download them all from there. They're all organized by show. So you should be able to, to get to any of that. So when we first thought about doing a show on teleprompters, my original goal was that we would create a teleprompter that would let us inject commands. And so when it got to a certain point on the screen, so when somebody's reading a prompter, you could automatically direct vMix to do things. And that was our original plan for what we wanted to do for the show. But as I mentioned, some of the limitations, there was no way to really figure out where we were at any given point in time with what was loaded in the ticker. So that sort of limited our ability to do that. But we thought that would be really cool where you could be reading a script and then vMix could automatically go to a two box with you talking and a video playing and then go back or switch between. If you had multiple hosts, you could switch between camera angles for the host and sort of say, okay, host one is on now, host two is on that. And they could be reading and trigger all those things sort of as an automatic part of the scroll. Unfortunately, as I said, that wasn't something we could do. We actually tried to do this line at a time. So we said, okay, I'm gonna just set up individual lines. I'm gonna break the script up into sort of, I, I forget what it was, like 25 character blocks and push them up one to the other, but it was sort of jerky and staggered. It would have let us do what we want, but it really wasn't a, uh, a great experience in use case. So we opted against that and instead just rounded out what we could do to try to make it as functional as possible. So let's see. Uh, okay, nobody else has any other questions. So let me, you know, if you have any other questions, like let's, uh, you know, get them on. Oh, okay, we have JP. So he says, that if you use Google Sheets, your producer still has to type in the call, uh, type in the cell. Uh, sadly, vMix still does not link to Google Docs as a data source. Yeah, that is, that is correct. So you, you would still need to do that. But I mean, the other possibility, and I'm improvising as I go, I believe you could write stuff inside of, Google has its own scripting language. So I believe you could probably do stuff that would let you take text that was edited inside of a, uh, a, a Google doc and push that into a cell in a Google sheet. Not 100% sure, 
but I know there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of crossplay between the different Google apps. And it may be possible to do some scripting there where the Google Doc really acts as an intermediary and just bridges between the two, uh, the two different uh, apps back to your vMix session and lets you, you pull that data in that way. So that may be a way to, to think about doing that where somebody could edit inside the sheet. So uh, let's see, do we have, so we have Advent Media. So Simon from the UK, could you not automate some of the changes by using the voice commands in vMix? So yes, so this is something, uh, I don't believe that vMix would be able to like listen to me speak and from there trigger specific commands. It, it, I haven't played that much with the vMix voice commands, but I believe they're more like training where you sit there and go, I'm going to set up a, a phrase that I want to say, and that phrase can be used to, to trigger an action. So I don't think it could listen, sort of know where I am in the script. Uh, it could be something where a producer could potentially talk into it, but then a lot of these things would work very well with button presses. Uh, the other possibility uh, would be to set basically almost like a, a rundown, but just without times, but just the order. And you could do that with just a foot pedal. So when I get to a certain part, I could have a little on-screen indicator that just tells me push the pedal. Uh, and that would be something that we could bake into the script where we'd, you know, we'd see that you know, as, it, as we know we want to do a change at that point in the script, we just put a, you know, a special character at the end and then say, okay, now I know when I finish that, I press a button and we do a transition, or some type of adjustment. So there could be ways to do that, and then that would just queue up. So you'd basically go through that punch list of transitions as you're reading the script. So there may be ways to do it that way that could work uh, more easily. Or, you know, as somebody mentioned with the, the pause play on the, the having a remote control, it would be possible to do something like that as well, where using something pause play to control the scrolling of the script and doing something like next slide, previous slide to control these sort of triggers for different uh, vMix commands to, to change what's being sent out and displayed. So I think there are a couple of ways to do that. And the other thing is there are tools that can listen and transcribe what somebody's voice is saying. And it would be possible to sort of take and use that, but that's, there's a lot of moving parts now in there because you'd have to have that sort of running and talking into vMix. Very possible, and, and it might be an interesting type of show to do, but it wasn't uh, something we actually were looking to build in the time we had to, to put today's show together. So let's see. Uh, so yeah, so JP uh, is saying you can use a, a Google Sheet for this. And that's, that's true. I mean, a Google Sheets are really good for these types of punch lists that, that you want to do. Uh, you know, the, the thing with prompting is that it's very difficult to do it on a strict rundown because everybody's going to talk at a slightly different pace. And you can't really just say, I have my text and I have my times and the times I'm just going to go off a sort of a production clock and just do the switches because people probably won't keep strictly to time and you'll be cutting them off or having odd gaps of time waiting. But uh, doing this where you basically use that to build the list. So each part of the script that I want to uh, have a, a, an action in, I could just take and, and make that a separate segment and put those uh, vMix shortcut actions into, into the script that way. So definitely different ways to do it. So, so let's see. So the other thing that I wanted to, to touch on and we're, we've been working on this because it's, it's something that has impacted our shows, is we've had issues with internet uh, and, and specifically with where we will back up and we sort of lose the stream or the stream gets really deprecated. And then when it catches up, you have sync issues and other stuff. We know that happened on last week's show. So we think there's a strong possibility that the problem is actually 
inside of the modem that we use to connect to our ISP. And this comes back, you know, this is probably a little inside, you know, the, the tech world. But Intel has a chip called, I think it's the Puma 6, which is the processor that runs uh, a lot of these modems. And it has a known set of problems. And one of the problems on the list of known problems is that it can simply stop streaming, get congested, hang up, and then you know either drop scripts, uh, drop uh, streams, or basically deprecate them to the point where you know they they can't keep up. And you have some of the issues that we've had. So we are doing some stuff. We're getting a second internet line put in, with uh, which we'll we'll use our own modem for that we know is a, a solid modem for live streaming. And we'll see if that makes a difference. But I really wanted to share that with all of you because I know it's it sort of impacted our time together. And I feel everybody deserves an update, but that's actually going to be getting installed, fingers crossed, tomorrow. Uh, so we'll let you know next week how all this plays out and whether this seems to make a difference. And, you know, of course, your feedback is always welcome for that. So let's see. Uh, let's see. So JP has uh, something about we position a camera above a second monitor at a distance, and you hardly pick up eye movement. Uh, but the non, yeah, so what, what JP is saying is, is very true. When you have something that's very close, the eye level, so if, if I'm sort of looking here, and I just look down a little, the eye level is much more noticeable for that sort of tilt uh, because the camera is relatively close. This camera is probably less than four feet in front of me. If this were across the room and I were zoomed in and I did that type of small motion, it wouldn't be something that you would probably notice because if I'm looking just below the lens, when it's that far away, it looks like I'm looking into the lens. So. That's really something in terms of prompters where those little prompters that you have, like the iPhone or the iPad prompters, they are great for doing some things, you know, improvisationally. But the reason you see studios with the sort of like the big 24 inch monitors and all the way across a room is because it gives them that sort of flexibility where little drop in eye uh, focus, you know, eye position isn't noticed and people feel you're still making that direct eye contact. So good point on that, JP. And that, that's something, you know, when you set this up, you, uh, you can definitely keep in mind. We set this with a fairly large font uh, in part because without my glasses, I'm <laughs> probably legally blind here. But, uh, you know, it, it's also something where if you wanted to move it further away, it would definitely work for you. And, you know, this is something, even when you're working with remote talent, if they have decent cameras and a, and a, and a real setup at a remote location, having that type of thing where you can have a, a reasonably uh, close monitor or a further away camera that can sort of zoom in over it, you can still do something that they could read, but that you, know, you won't notice the eye line the same way. So different ways to, to set this up, but uh, very good point there with, with how this can be implemented in a practical way you know, with the hardware around it. All right, so. I don't know if we have any other questions or nope. So, all right, I think we're gonna call this a wrap for this week. I appreciate all of you joining me for the show today and for basically, you know, spending time in, in the post-show hangout. That's something I also, I really enjoy this part of the show and sort of the open conversation we can have here. So uh, thank you all for being part of that. So with that said, we will wrap it for this week. And I say thank you. See you all next week. Take care, everyone.